Hi guys, welcome to another Creative Tap tutorial. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be giving you um, an introduction into the Roto and Roto Paint nodes. Um, so we're going to be looking at rotoscoping and I'm going to be splitting this up into I think four, maybe five, maybe even six videos. Um, but this one's going to serve as an introduction to the Roto and Roto Paint node. Mainly the Roto node, but we're going to look at the Roto Paint as well. Okay, so let's have a look at my first setup. So. I've got my viewer here. Um, now, if you hit with your mouse in the node graph area, if you hit O on the keyboard, you will get a roto node, okay? So you'll see that's just popped up there. If you hit P, you'll get what's called a roto paint node. So you've got two very similar nodes, roto and roto paint, okay? Now I'm just gonna bring my properties bin down to two, so it'll just show the two. So we've got Roto, Roto 8, you can see this one here, this is our Roto node, and Roto Paint, okay? And I'm very quickly going to explain the differences between these, so I'm going to delete these. Another way to get them up is to hit Tab, and then you can type Roto, and you've got Roto there, or Roto Paint, okay? Now, if I just double-click Roto, this first one, Roto 1, you can see that you've got one, two, three icons, three options on the left by there, and our interface is, well, yeah, quite simple, uh, and we've got a few options along the top. Okay, first of all, just pay attention to these. So we've got three options out here. Now if I double click my, let's change this properties bin actually to one. If I double click my Roto Paint, You'll notice we've got our first three tools, but we've got an additional three by here. So Roto, we've got three tools. Roto Paint, we've got those three, but we've got an additional bunch down here. Now, I'll very quickly go through these. You've got selection tools by here, so you can select all. You can select just points. You can select feather points. You can select spines. Uh, spines, I mean splines. Um, so this is basically your selection tool. Once you've drawn a shape, you can select different parts of it. Here you've got add points, so you can add points to your roto shape, and I'll show you all this. Remove points, and you can just modify the points, so this is where you modify your shape. In here, you can create your shape, so you can create an ellipse, a rectangle, a cusped rectangle, a spline, um, a bezier, and I'll, again, I'll show you that. So, roto has all of that stuff in here, so see, all the same. Now, roto paint... Basically, Roto Paint is the Roto node, but with extra stuff in there. See, in here you've also got in the Roto Paint, you've got a brush, so you can do paint work, you know, like beauty work. You've got your clone tool, you've got a reveal tool, um, you've got a razor back in there, you've got blur, sharpen and smear, so you can actually paint blur specific images, specific parts of your image. And you've got your dodge and burn tools. Okay, in its... Um, in the basic form, that that's the that's the that's the only difference between these. You can do more in your Roto Paint. Now, if you're just doing rotoscoping where you're drawing masks to mask things out, just just use the Roto node. If you know you're going to be doing paint work as well, then you can use a Roto Paint node. Um, so that's the key differences. Having a look at the properties bin on the right, you'll see that there's a couple extra tabs in Roto Paint node. Um, so you've got stroke in there, and you haven't got stroke in the roto node, okay? Because obviously stroke has to do with your paint strokes, okay? And that relates to the brush, okay? So you've just got an extra few additions in the roto paint. Don't need to worry about it for this tutorial, um, but that's the main differences. You, you can create masks in the roto, and you can do that and do brush strokes in the roto paint, okay? So that's basically just the intro to it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to focus on the Roto node within this one. Okay, so if I double click Roto 3, um, what I'll first of all do is I'll come to this Create tab. Now, if I hold my click down here, you'll see that I've got Bezier, Cusped Bezier, B Spline, Ellipse Rectangle, Cusped Rectangle, Open Spline. First of all, I'm going to start with a Bezier, okay? So if I just select this, I can now click into my window by here, and I can start clicking and dragging and creating these shapes. Now, if you've ever used the mask tool in um, the pen tool and masked in After Effects before, you'll know exactly how these work. Um, if I don't click and drag, you'll see I get very angular points. But if I click and drag, I can start making some nice sweeping curves. Okay, now let's just join that back up. I've got a bit of a mental 
mental path by there. Um, let's delete that. But what you'll notice, actually, before I do delete it, what you'll notice is I've got Bezier 1 in this little subfolder called root. Root is just, it's just a subfolder. It's just a bottom folder, really. So if I were to now go ahead and just create another, let's get this Bezier tool again, create another one just like this, just a circle. I've got Bezier 2, okay? So I can come in and I can right click and delete Bezier 1, that first initial one, and I'll delete this one as well, okay? So delete. Right, so that's, um, you know, your Bezier tool. Um, but notice when I drew, you can't actually see, once I close this up, you can't actually see anything there. And that's because if we look at our out output, the node, we've got our viewer connected to the node, the node is currently outputting just an alpha channel. We're viewing, if you look up here, we're viewing the RGB. So if I hit A on my keyboard, we're now viewing the alpha. See, when I hit A, it jumps across the alpha channel. And it shows us that it's created a solid alpha where we've drawn. Okay? If we want this to, if we want to be able to see it in the RGB, if we want to just create a shape, what we need to do is go to the output and say, okay, give me RGB. So we've got red, green, and blue. And you can turn off the green, for example, and you've got red and blue, which makes you purple. Um, you can also go RGB and A. Okay, so we've got red, green, blue, and there you go. We've got our got our alpha channel there if we just hit A. Okay, so um, that's why you weren't able to see it in case you were wondering. So I'm going to delete Bezier 1 just for now. Right click, delete. Let's have a look at the other options. You've got cusped Bezier. So what's cusped Bezier? Well, if I start drawing, I'm actually clicking and dragging my mouse, but it's not giving me those curves. Curves, sorry. Cusped bezier is basically a bezier. It's basically making a shape, but you can't have these. Um, you can't have these curves. If I come back to just bezier, when I click and drag, I can. Okay, but cusped bezier. If I come ooh, back to this one, even though I'm clicking and dragging, nothing is happening. It's not giving me any option to put a curve in there, okay? So what you can do is you can right click, you I can actually right click these and if you come to cusp or D smooth, you can actually better way to do it is highlight this and hit Z and we can actually give these handles. So if we come to this one, this is a cusped bezier because it's very angular and there's no curves. But if we just hit select one and hit Z, it now gives it these handles. Okay, so again, just gives you loads of options, really. So let's delete, delete, and delete. So yeah, cusp bezier, you come in, you draw. Oh no, it's really angular. If you select one of these, just by clicking and dragging, hit Z, and now you've got these curves. Okay, um, let's have a look at another one. So B spline. Now this is a weird one. I know a few artists that swear by these and they use them. I personally don't like them. It's basically another way of creating a bezier, really. Now as I start clicking and dragging, you can see it's if you've used Mocker before, Mocker uses B splines. And basically, if I start clicking and dragging, you can see now instead of having those handles, because some people don't like those handles, I can actually start clicking and dragging, creating. A spline like this okay and it's just kind of another way of creating it other than the handles because some people don't like them but yeah that that's your B spline so it's just another way of creating your bezier okay just clicking and dragging cool um, I'm not gonna bore you with more B spline um, but again you can kind of come in and you can kind of edit these as well so you can kind of bring that out bring that back stuff like that actually a feather in I won't go into feathering yet um, Right, so again, you've got rectangle. So if I just click and drag, we've got a rectangle. Okay, and if I click and drag one of these points, what you'll notice is this point's got handles, so it's actually curved. It's not actually a rectangle um, anymore because I, I've moved it and it, we've got these curvy lines. See, when I go back in, I've got something called cusped rectangle. So if I draw this, uh, let's just bring these points in. You'll notice that when I do move these points, they are cusped. There's no handles on them. But again, if you want, if you want to give them handles, select, hit Z on your keyboard, and you've got these little handles that you can give it. So you've got like a rounded end there. And finally, you've got ellipse. Click and drag, hold Shift to keep it uniform, 
and the, these these can be quite useful. Um, so yeah, that's basically loads of different ways of drawing shapes. You can, let's just pull this back. So let's have a look and see what the tools do within here in, on the left. So we've got add points. Let's come to our circle. If I click, there you go, I can add points within here. So that's kind of cool. Um, remove points, does what it says in the 10. Let's click and we can remove points. Uh, let's remove another one by here, for example. Cool. Next one down, cusp points. Remember, cusp means that it's not got these handles to smooth it. So if we just click here, you can see now it's now pointed and not smooth anymore. Okay, so next one we've got is smooth points. So cusp removes the smoothing. Smooth points, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to add the ability to smooth it back out. So we've now got these handles back and we can smooth it again. Okay, and open and close curve. Um, if we click this, basically it's going to open your rotor shape, so it's not a fully formed shape. Now, I don't know, I haven't really used that before, but that's what it does. It opens and closes the path. Okay, you've also got something called remove feather. So I'll show you actually first how to feather shapes. So let's say, let's delete, let's delete this one for example. Let's get a new circle. Okay, now when I zoom in and select all these, you'll notice that, let's just select a point. I've got these handles I can modify, so I can alter the path, but I've also got this red line. If I click and drag this, you can see it's feathering off. So again, imagine like a ball's been dropped down and it's got this path of motion blur behind it, where it's almost semi-transparent. So you've got that feather by there, so let's go in and put more of a feather on it. So if we come in here, remove feather, Click one of these feather points and it removes your feather, okay? So, again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, along with this feathering, you have got the ability, if you come in to um, your node over here, you can, if you've got feather by here, see, you can um, you can do it to all of the shape, okay? So it doesn't, you don't necessarily, let's remove these first of all, you don't necessarily have to, um, pull it out but you can do it globally to the entire shape with this slider by here to be honest I would use the individual um, points within let's just set that back to zero I'd use the individual points within here because um, you've got more control but let's have a look at feather fall off so feather fall off if you alter this you can see exactly how fast that kind of um, that's that feather starts feathering so if when it was set on default one you want it to be you want it to get darker quite rapidly, you can just pull up like that, okay? So you can play around with the amount that it's feathering. Cool. So I think we basically talked through these tools now, and I've shown you how to draw and edit these rotor shapes. Um, one thing to notice is, let's just delete all of this, first of all. Let's just shift select, delete, and I'm going to draw one last rotor shape. Um, notice when I do, down here, undo that. Notice I'm on frame 131 down here. When I draw a roto shape, it now goes blue. And if we look in the dope sheet, which is basically our keyframe editor, you can see that on frame 131, if I scroll away, looking in here, if I zoom in, you've got that little blue keyframe. Okay, I'm on 141 now, but you can see that where I drew it on frame 131, I've got this little, this little keyframe. If I move forward to say 1.5, 1 1.50 1 or something, and now I select this and I move it, okay, we've got another keyframe. If I, if I go to 170 and I just bring in this point like that, we've got another keyframe. So every time you edit, you've got an additional keyframe being created. So then if I come back between them, very much like how our keyframes work in After Effects, you've got this animation. So it knows that on frame 131, it's a circle by here. But then I moved to frame 154, and I moved it. So between these, it's got to animate between, okay? Um, then if we come to frame 170, it knows by the time we get to 170, this sort of top point animates down, okay? So basically, every time you make a change, um, it, it, gets, it gets animated over time, very much like in After Effects, okay? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to look a little bit more at feathering, we're going to look at mo a little bit more modifying roto points, and we're going to look up, uh, look at the setup and ordering of nodes, okay? So we're going to look at some actual examples with footage. All footage used will be provided, I've got, I'll put download links where you can get this footage. So we're going to have a quick look. Let's hook our viewer up to um, 
merge one. Okay, I'm going to explain first of all what's going on. So we've got a merge node, we've got Roto, Premult, and two pieces of footage. So first piece of footage, it's this airport terminal. Um, so let's get rid of this Roto overlay. So just get this out of the bin. Cool. So if we play, there is actually some movement in here, whether or not you'll see it. Because uh, it's a very long clip. Anyway, let's just go back to, for now, for this, let's just go back to global. Okay, yeah, we've got a piece of, a piece of footage and it's an airport terminal, okay? We've also got this wing, okay? This is also a piece of footage. Um, you can see as I sort of skip through, it's a very long piece of footage. As I skip through, you can see stuff moving. Okay, I'm not gonna play it because it's just gonna take forever. Now what I've got at the end is I've got a merge, I've got the wing on top of this background, okay? So we've cut out the wing essentially. So let's break down what's happening. Got our footage coming in. Let's go to the re to the roto node. Um, what I've done is I've drawn a roto shape around the wing. You can see Bezier one, realistically I should rename it. So let's just cl right click um, or double click wing, okay? Um, so I've, I've drawn around the wing and then what that what this roto node is outputting an alpha channel okay and if you haven't watched the sort of pre melt pre multiply tutorial which i've uploaded and understanding what's going on with um alpha channels have a watch of that but if we hit a we can see we've generated an alpha channel at this roto node come down to pre melt so let's come back out of alpha come down to pre melt view that what it's doing is it's using that alpha channel and basically doing a cookie, like a cookie cutter. It's cutting out this piece based on that alpha channel. So if I draw, if I drag this point over here, you'll see it's now got a little bit of the sky in because the alpha channel is, yeah, got a sort of point over here. So I'll undo that. That's, that's what's happening. So by the time we get down to the pre-melt, let's pop back out of the alpha. By the time we get to the pre-melt, it's cut it out and basically we're putting A on top of B. Okay, so when we view that, it's put in pipe A, which is this cutout wing on top of this piece of footage. So if I were to get rid of that pre-melt or disable it, you'll see it's, it's not really working. We've got, let's just get rid of this overlay. We've got part of the footage still on there. Again, disable the roto. It, yeah, it's not really working. So we need all of this, okay. Um, now, I've got this exact same setup over here, but something different, but it's set up slightly different. We've got the same result, but something slightly different. So, have a look in Roto 2. We've got output alpha, pre multiply none, because we're pre multiplying with a node, okay? What we're doing is we're pre multiplying that alpha. Now, there is another way of working. If we look at Roto 4, double click, we've got output alpha. And then we've got pre-multiply RGBA. Now, it, it gives you the exact same result, okay? So, Roto2 over here, output an alpha, then we're pre-multiplying it with a pre-mult node, and then we're merging it on top. Over here, okay, over in example 2, Roto4, that pre-multiplication is happening within the node. Now, I actually think this is a bad way of working, because if you hand this to another artist, they they need to be able to see that this pre-multiplication is taking place and they don't want to have to go into individual nodes and see all oh, right he's doing it within the node so outputting an alpha and pre-multiplying it rather than doing it within the node is, is a hell of a lot better way of working gives you the same result but it's just a lot more clearer and we've got another one we've got another example here so what we've got is we've got this same roto. It's the exact same roto. If we turn the overlay back on, it's that same shape around the wing, right? Um, but what we've got is, first of all, if we disconnect that, we've got our merge. We've put A, so shot A over shot B, okay? But then we've also got this mask input, see, on our merge, mask. And if I hook this up to the alpha, what this merge node is doing is it's saying, right, I'm going to mask A via the alpha and put it over the top of B. So these rotos have the exact same shape on them. It's just different ways of setting them up, okay? My prefer, I think the way I prefer working is probably setup one. I definitely don't like setup two because you can't see that pre-multiplication taking, taking place. This way is an okay, of working as, okay way of working as well. I just prefer this way because it's a lot clearer. You can see exactly what's happening, okay? And if the pre-multiply 
um, kind of confused you, go and check the pre-melt apply, um, the pre-melt tutorial that explains it. Basically what's happening is you're creating over here, you're creating an alpha channel and this pre-melt node tells the software, right, only show the footage through this alpha channel. So it basically tells it to cut it out. It's like track mats if you've used them inside of After Effects. Um, but yeah, with example two, it's being done within the node and that's not great. Here you can see you're using your alpha as a mask. That you know that's not that's not a wrong way of working. I just I think this this really isn't the best way. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to actually create this now. So let's get us get our two pieces of footage. Let's bring them down to here. And right, so we have got cancel that. We have got let's exit out of that. We've got our terminal and we've got our wing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a roto node. So O on the keyboard. I'm going to select this and connect it to my wing. I'm going to come on in and a little bit of a tip, it's very hard to see where the line is, where the, where the clouds start and the plane begins. Okay, So what I do is using your gamma and exposure sliders at the top, if you just gamma down and exposure up, oh, not, not up too much, and then gamma down a bit more, you can now see it's banded. You know, so it's got all this banding because we're limiting the amount of colors, but you can now see a clear line, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get my Bezier tool. I'm going to come on in. I'm in my Roto 8. Yeah, get my Bezier tool. Click by here. And basically you want to do as few points as possible. What I've seen loads of people do is do loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of points like this. And they'll do a few points around the corner then and stuff like that and basically the more points you've got the more that you've got to depend on them being straight or if you've got for example let's undo all of that we know this is this this is a straight line up until about here i think it starts bending so i know that i can do a point like that okay let's just line that up and i don't have to worry about loads of points and again if you're animating it it's, it just gives you more to worry about so Again, I can see this one's kind of relatively straight, so I'm just going to pull that in, something like that. There we go, and I'm going to come up to here. There's a little bit of a dip there, so I'm just using my Bezier curve there just to just to get in there slightly. I'm going to come right up to the top by here, and I'm going to come across, and you could probably, having a look at this corner, you probably should get a little bit of a Bezier around there just to make sure that it's matching up properly. And don't worry, you can kind of edit the points as you're going along. You can come back and edit them later. But that's probably the best way of working. Come across to here. And again, depending on how how accurate you need to be, you could probably do a bezier for that as well. Okay, just to make sure. Now, I'm not gonna worry about these little bits coming off, but I know this is very straight by here. And I'm not gonna worry about them either, just for this example. I know I can come all the way down, boom, and actually probably do with creating a bezier there because I think it goes in a bit so click and then I'm just gonna drag out okay and I'm just gonna push it in just a touch now this is interesting if I go to click down here what's happening is I've got this big curve the reason being is because when I clicked off this this handle by here is being used to kind of push in to curve this line but what it does is it also gives you a handle the other end so if I were to draw something the handle by here is dictating this line coming out so what you need to do is I'm going to draw that again click and drag just to get a little bit of a curve in there now if I hold control or it might be command on a Mac this little yellow handle click control I can now just point this in the direction that I want the next point to go Okay, so I want the next point to come down here. Okay, so I'm just going to point it in this direction. And now when I click to do my next point, it's all good. And this takes practice, guys, okay? It takes practice to get your head around it. Um, just keep on clicking. And I probably should have clicked down by about here. Just get a curve around there. Click down to here. Get a curve around. And again, because I've curved around here, okay, curved around this little bit just to get that nice curve, um, what's going to happen is if I click by here now, you can see it jumps back there, around there, and I don't like that. I just almost want to go down. So, like I said, let's do this, and then control-click this yellow handle, 
and say, no, we want to go down here. This is the direction we're going. So then we can go just like that, okay? And it works a lot better. So come down, keep practicing this. There you go, we've got a nice little curve there. Bring it a bit like that. Keep going down, bring a nice curve around here. And something like that will do for now. Come down. Just want to get a nice curve. But again, if we come by here, it's, it's just giving us that nasty curve. So again, remember what you need to do. Draw out your curve. Control click and point in the direction that you want to go. And you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm very I'm gonna speed through this now. Mine's gonna be not the most accurate. Um, I'm just trying to get through it fast so that I don't take too much time. Yeah, it's not gonna be very accurate at all. I do apologize. I'm not bothering about that bit. Um, come in, this is a good example. You need to get that curve, okay? But then you've got that again. So all you need to do is control click and point this in the direction you wanna go. And boom, you should be laughing. Okay, so very quickly speed through. And one final one, something like that. You've got that nice curve. And remember, control click. This is the direction we're going in now. Boom. And you can join your Roto back up. So thanks for sticking with me with that. What we've got now is this Roto is output in an alpha channel. So hit A on our keyboard when our mouse is in the viewer. It's generated an alpha channel, the shape of the wing. Okay. And what we want to do is I'm just going to reset my exposure and my gamma at the top. I'm going to get my pre-melt node. Okay, because we're going to pre-multiply this now, and it's basically, when we drag this in, boom, it's cutting it out. Now, what you may notice is, especially with mine, because mine is quite rough, if we look back in, well, let's turn the roto on and off, or let's turn the roto and the pre-melt on and off. You can see that we've got this little highlight right here, because it's not matching up. So what you can do is you can always come back in to your roto, you can click these points, and you can just start editing them. So let's get this handle. And let's bring it in, and you can tighten up everything just like that. Um, having worked with this piece of footage before, if you look in, this line isn't too sharp. So another thing we can do to help this is we can also, um, I know this is going to be really messy for me because I did it very quick, but you can also select these, do all do them individually, and you can basically, I'm going to, basically when I drag in, it feathers it like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather all of these in slightly just because the line in the footage if we disable the rotor and the pre-melt it is quite a blurry line so feathering them will help it okay so just select them all together and you can kind of uh, it's difficult to do them all together so just feather in you can come in and you can tighten it up like so so feather what you shouldn't do is if you're, I'm feathering inward, you shouldn't then feather out because you'll get some. You can get some sort of artifact in because it's feathering in and then out on the next point. Just, just, just avoid that. Um, yeah, so feather, feather, and basically what you can do is you can go around and you're going to end up tidying up some of your rotor work. It's, it's not often that, especially at the beginning, it's not often you'll draw around a shape and you'll be like, ah, nailed it in one especially at the beginning that doesn't tend to happen so coming back in and doing a little bit of cleanup is quite important now i'm having trouble feathering this so what you can do is you can hit e to feather um and it's actually feathered it out so just click and drag inwards because again we want to feather in all the time but yeah you can basically go around then and you can start let's feather these inwards and tidy it up a bit so we've got that perfect edge and you can start doing all this okay and then we'll now have a quick look i'm gonna leave mine now you can kind of keep catering yours to check if this is working what you can do is you can turn your overlay off so if you hit q with your mouse in the keyboard it turns off that overlay and you can see it says overlay on and off so you can see are the edges working well a lot better than they were before okay cool actually this point by here can afford to come out a bit and i think something like that and we can even feather this guy inwards as well pull him out yeah okie dokie cool so let's come out now we've got our footage we've applied we've generated 
an alpha channel and we've also feathered it slightly you can see there it's feathering um, and now we're using that we're using a pre-melt and we're stamping out the footage so when we come back to the rgb from the alpha it's stamping that out okay all i can do now is merge get a merge node put a over b and you now have your wing over your background footage as you play through mind because this footage this wing does actually move if i jump through 100 or 200 frames you'll see when it previews that this roto shape won't line or shouldn't line up um yeah still is still processing you'll see that th this wing does actually just jump through to here or to here this wing does actually kind of move a bit so your your roto may not match up for the whole thing but basically that's how we've set it up we've got our footage we've generated an alpha we've used that to stamp out and just cut that piece of footage out and we've merged that on top now what i will quickly show you is the other setup not this one i won't go through that because i don't like that's not a good way of working but what we could have done is we could have merged a over b Okay, so we've got footage A on top of B. Now what you'll need to do is if you do this way, you'll need to double click on the footage and give it an auto alpha, just to give it an alpha channel. Okay, and you can use the mask input of our merge and hook this up to the roto. And we've got the exact same thing. We've got the exact same thing. So we're merging A over B, but we're using a mask, which is what we've drawn. Just make sure that if you do this way, you've got to click auto alpha in your A pipe footage. Okay, it's just, it's, I won't go into why is this, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's setting up our roto effectively. I've got another example here now, which I'm going to go through just to finish off because we do further stuff with our alpha channel. So let's have a quick look. We have got, um, <clears throat> basically if we have a look at the first piece of footage, it's my hallway, um, welcome. We've got a roto, so if I view the alpha, we've actually got what's called an inverted alpha. Okay, so we've got, um, I've generated this, okay. It basically, white is maintaining all of the footage but deleting the doorway. I'm then blurring it slightly, so if we come in, I'm blurring it, so if I disable this blur, blur in the alpha ever so slightly yeah you can see when i disable it and then i'm coming down and i'm pre-melting it so if i come out of the alpha we are basically cutting a hole here because boom i'm just putting some random footage of deer in a snowy background behind it kind of like narnia i guess you could say and i have got a little grade in there just to kind of this in terms of compositing this doesn't fit at all i just chucked a grade in there um so this isn't me compositing this shot together i'm just illustrating some stuff with the roto okay so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to execute that so let's copy these pieces of footage and i'm going to talk you through some other techniques through this example okay right so we know what the end goal is let's have a look at our piece of footage I'm going to create my roto node, so hit O, hook that in there, and right, I'm going to draw, easiest way to do this is I'm going to draw a rectangle around my doorway, okay, so let's get my rectangle tool, and just going to create a rectangle like so, I will actually come in and I'm going to make sure everything's lined up, so just bring that up a little bit, bring this one across, and is that lining up all the way down? Yes, until it gets to about here. So I'm going to drag this point just by there. Does it line up all the way up? Yes. And let's come into here. Right, this point needs to come to there. And does it line up all the way up? It could be pushed. Because remember, these um, the rectangle is actually, isn't actually cusped. Okay, so you need to come back in and just make sure that when you move these points, they don't curve and warp. Okay, that's fine. Let's have a look at my alpha channel then. Well, if I were to pre-melt this now, okay, this this is this is this is important. If I were to pre-melt this now, it's cut the doorway out. I want the reverse. Okay, so so what do we do? Well, within there's a couple of things we can do. Um, you can see I've actually got two examples here that do the exact same thing, and I'll show you that later. Um, within the roto, you can click. If you look here, this little box over here. If we hover over, ah, I clicked it on accident. <laughs> Basically, if you hover over, it says inverted. 
So you can basically invert this, so do the opposite. So if I view my alpha channel, basically what it's doing is sw swapping black for white and white for black. Okay, so what now we've inverted it but just by clicking this, it's saying white is the area we want to keep. Because when we drew it, we drew just around the door. So we were saying we want to keep the door and we want to delete everything else because there's no alpha here. We're just creating the alpha around the door. But by simply inverting it, we're now deleting that part or hiding that part and we're maintaining and keeping the rest of it around here. Okay, so all I've done is I've drawn a rectangle, modified it, and I've clicked invert. And now when we come to our pre-melt, it knows, okay, well, I'm keeping this bit because this bit's currently in the alpha and I'm getting rid of the doorway. So if we hadn't have inverted, we'd have just kept the doorway and it would have been pain in the ass. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, that's inverted. Now, let's, okay, jump in, merge A, so A over B. Okay, what have we got? Oh, okay, we've got our footage in the background. Okay, it's all very well and good, but um, to be honest, that's very, let's look at this, that's a very, very, very sharp line. So, this is the good part, okay? This or the good part, I'm making it sound a lot more exciting than it is. This is the interesting part. If I create, if I hit B, and I can create a blur node, if I drop this in to this stream, We've got our footage, we've generated an alpha channel, and now we want to blur that alpha channel. It's another way. We could go into the Roto itself, and we could start f using the feather properties to feather it. That's one way of doing it, but if we want to do it to the whole way around, a quicker way, instead of just going to those feather points or going into the feather options by here, we could just blur the alpha. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to go into my blur node, and I'm going to chuck this up just to overdo it. I'm going to chuck it up to about 48, okay? Well, we've got a problem. It's blurring everything. We just want to blur the alpha channel. Now, look up here. We've got blur all. But this roto, we've only generated an alpha. Okay? That's what we've done. We've generated, let's view up here. We've generated an alpha channel. All we want to do is blur just that alpha channel. We don't want to blur the color pixels. So, if we go to blur and change this to alpha, okay, You'd probably say, well, nothing's happening. Well, if we come into our alpha channel, yes, something is happening. The only thing that this blur is doing is this blur in the alpha channel. So if I disable it by hitting D, you'll see it's blur in the alpha channel, okay? But what it's not doing, it's come out with the alpha, it's not blur in the RGB, okay? The reason we can't see this cut out, by the way, is because we're viewing at our blur. We haven't pre-melted yet, okay? So if we change channels on the blur back to RGB, well, it blurs everything, including our alpha. Oh no, RGBA, sorry. <laughs> there you go. So what you want to do is, we've got our footage, we've generated an alpha channel, we want to blur just the alpha channel, and now when we pre-melt, it'll just blur that edge. Whereas if we were on RGBA, it blurs everything, but we just want to blur that little edge. And so when we disable the blur, you'll see what's happening. It's just doing the alpha channel, not the whole red, green, and blue, okay? Now, 48's a little bit too much, so I'm literally probably going to bring this to, like, 2. And all that's doing, all this node ends up doing, is just blurring that edge ever so slightly. So instead of doing it to the whole image, red, green, blue, and alpha, it's just doing it to the alpha channel, okay? And then, okay, we're working a little bit better. As a composite, it doesn't work. There's loads. There's going to be loads of issues. The perspective's wrong. The kind of grading is wrong. Colors are off. It's all that. But I'm just showing you um, the roto node at the moment. So don't worry about this in terms of a composite. Okay. Um, so this is basically what we've got going on. Same thing as we've got going on up here. I've just chucked an extra grade node in there just to make it pop a little bit more. Now this over here is the exact same. But what I've done is like previously. Remember when I said in this over here, we're doing our pre-multiplication within the Roto node, and I don't like that. It's You need, if you're passing this on to somebody else to look at, an artist, a lecturer, whatever, you need to be able to see this pre-mult happening. You don't want to have to go into individual nodes and click to see how it's happening with inside there. So what I've done here, let's come back to this example. We've got Roto. We've drawn the rectangle in Roto 6, this one over here, and we've inverted it within the node. Well, that's all very well and good, but it's better to do it more visibly. And um, that's exactly what I've done over here. So, same example. In our Roto 7, because it's another Roto node, well, we've drawn the Roto, so let's view it. 
Um, so view in Roto 6 actually, we've got it inverted because we've double clicked and we've inverted it in there. View in Roto 7, I haven't, so I haven't inverted it, you can see. What I do is I use a node to invert it. So I come down and I've got an invert and I've told it only the alpha. Now, you can't, you can't see anything actually happening to the RGB. If this invert wasn't set to just alpha, it would invert the whole kind of image, okay? So I'll illustrate that down here. This is our example. Earlier we went into the roto and we inverted our alpha within here. And you know, that was working for us, but that's not the best way. Okay, so let's uninvert that. So now this is what ends up happening. We have the cutout of the door. What we want to do is use an invert node and it just makes it more clear to anyone using this. Put our invert node in there and we can go, right, set this Let's have a look without it first. It's not working because we've got our alpha. That alpha is then getting inverted when we come to our invert node, but it's also doing it to the RGB and it's just throwing it off. So just change this to only invert the alpha and then we'll blur the alpha, which we which we did earlier. So view this. You can't actually see anything in the RGB. Come across to the alpha channel. So we've got that little bit of a blur as we disable. This invert node is doing the invert for us, okay? And then we pre-multiply to cut it out and then we merge over. And basically working with that, putting the invert there instead of doing it within the roto just makes it a hell of a lot clearer for other artists to kind of see what you're doing. So that wraps up the first kind of vid the first video in this sort of rotoscoping series. We haven't actually animated any rotoscopes yet. We've just kind of had a look at the setup, the appropriate setup for them, how to create them and all that. I will be showing you how to animate them in further tutorials. I did show you over here how to kind of work with the keyframes and what what's going on. But yes, cheers for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial of the series where we will be animating some rotoscopes on some live footage and doing a little bit of light compositing. Cheers for tuning in. See you next time.